Resistance against the Nazis during the Second World War was dealt with rather brutally. Hitler and his Wehrmacht had huge plans expanding their Third Reich across many different territories, especially the Balkan states and east into the Soviet Union. The conflict between the Soviets and the Germans on the Eastern Front resulted in some of the bloodiest and most brutal scenes of the Second World War. Infamous battles would emerge, for example the Battle of Stalingrad, in which it's estimated that two million soldiers were injured, missing or killed. Eventually it was Hitler's staunch desire to take Russia and destroy the Soviet Union that led to the downfall of the Nazis, as the Red Army by 1944 were forcing back the Germans towards their home. There were many acts of resistance and resistance groups that aided the Red Army in their missions, and one of the most famous groups was the Partisans. These specifically helped to contribute to the outcome of the war within the Balkan states, and today still many Partisans are celebrated for their bravery and acts against the Third Reich. One such Partisan and Russian was Vera Voloshina, a young girl who joined the Red Army, but ultimately in 1941 was brutally executed by the Nazis. So join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Vera Voloshina, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Vera Voloshina was born on the 30th of December 1919, and her father was a minor and her mother a schoolteacher. She was born in Kemerova, which is found within Siberia. As a child, she was very keen on sport, and she particularly thrived in gymnastics. She did well at school, and then after she completed the 10th grade, she moved to Moscow in 1937. She began to study at the Institute of Physical Culture and Education, and whilst there she delved into her hobbies of shooting, poetry and drawing. In fact, before the Second World War broke out, it's believed that she was chosen by a sculptor, Ivor Shadow, for his famous artwork, The Girl with an Oar, which was unveiled in Gorky Park in 1935. This large 12 metre statue features Vera Voloshina, and more statues similar to this one would emerge in various towns and parks around the Soviet Union after this initial one was unveiled. While she was in Moscow, Voloshina also started to undertake parachute jumps, and she began to learn how to pilot a plane. In particular, she joined the Aero Club and regularly parachuted from aircraft, and she learned how to fly a Polikarov I 153 Soviet fighter biplane which emerged in the late 1930s. Whilst inside the Aero Club, she tried to join the fight which was occurring with the Spanish Civil War, and even tried to go to Spain to join the conflict. On the 22nd of June 1941, Vera, who was settled in Moscow and a third year student at the university, went into the local shops to go and buy a white dress. She was planning to marry her childhood friend Yuri, who had proposed, However, whilst in the shop, she heard that the war for her had just begun. For a few years, it looked as if a war between the might of the Soviet Union and Hitler's Germany would not occur. In August 1939, the two nations signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, an agreement between them not to go to war. Within this agreement was the idea that there would be a proposed ten years of peace between them, and there were also instructions as to how Poland would be divided, after the invasion of Poland and subsequent occupation occurred. It was common knowledge that Adolf Hitler had always planned to expand his Reich within the Soviet Union, and it surprised many across the world when the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed. However, on the 22nd of June 1941, Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. This campaign itself ultimately decided the outcome of the Second World War, and Hitler always saw the Soviets and the Communists as his enemies. He wished to destroy Communism, the Soviet Army, and to take all of the resources and enslave the population, with Germans moving east with the idea of Lebensraum. At first, during the early parts of the conflict, the Germans enjoyed much success, with the armoured panzer divisions smashing through Soviet defensive lines, and hundreds of thousands of Red Army soldiers were killed or captured once encircled. The Luftwaffe carried out huge bombing offences, and also easily defeated the Soviet Air Force. The Wehrmacht and German soldiers were noted for brutality, treating civilians horrifically. The Einsatzgruppen, for example, would follow up the army, rounding up Jews and executing them, and also the German soldiers burned many Russian villages to the ground, with the campaign becoming a war of annihilation. So on the day Vera Voloshina went shopping for her wedding, the war broke out for the Soviets with the German invasion. 
Now, during autumn 1941, Vera started to work towards the war effort and started to complete tasks which would help the Soviet Red Army. She initially helped to dig trenches and defensive anti-tank ditches around Moscow, a city which, although Vera's home, would be targeted heavily by the Germans. Now, women were encouraged at times and were allowed to join the Soviet Army, and this was very different from the German Army, as women were considered to be out of place on the battlefield, but Vera Voloshina joined the Red Army. She was assigned to the Unit 9903 of the Intelligence Division, and in this detachment she began to complete sabotage work behind the enemy lines. She was noted for being quite a good shot, and it's thought that she did pick off some German soldiers. She was also part of a number of successful raids on the German army, however her last combat operation occurred on the 21st of November 1941. Whilst under the cover of nightfall, and passing a road between two villages, her Red Army detachment came under fire, and the Germans spotted them. There was a rather intense firefight, and during the skirmish, Vera Voloshina was injured severely when she was shot in the shoulder. After this, she was then captured and taken prisoner, and then was subject to torture. The Germans regularly tortured soldiers to obtain information, and Voloshina was not excused from this, but she refused to give over any intel. Because she refused to give over anything, she was sentenced to death, and was executed in brutal fashion on the 29th of November 1941. It was said of her execution, She was brought here by a car. Germans came here. There were many of them. When the side door of the car opened, the villagers saw the poor girl covered in blood, lying in the car. At first there was no sign of life in her. Two Germans with black crosses on their sleeves climbed into the car, and wanted to help her to her feet. She pushed the Germans and clinging with one hand on the cab, climbed down. Her second hand was hanging like a whip, and then she began to speak. First she said something in German and then in Russian. I'm not afraid of death. My comrades will avenge me. We will win, you'll see. And then she began to sing. The Germans were silently listening. The officer who commanded the execution shouted something to the soldiers. They threw the noose around her neck and jumped off the machine. The officer ran up to the driver and then he turned white, probably not so experienced in hanging people. The officer drew his revolver and shouted something to his own chauffeur, and then the car moved off. She still had time to shout so loudly that my blood ran cold, farewell comrades, and when I opened my eyes I saw that she was hanging. Vera Voloshina was hanged at a farm, and her body was hung from a willow tree. The Nazis did not allow locals to bury her, and her body was left in the tree. It was only when the Germans withdrew from the village that Vera was buried. The story of Vera Voloshina is one that is inspiring, a young 22-year-old girl taking up arms against the Germans to fight for her country. There were other examples of women who were executed by the Nazis for fighting against them, for example Lepa Ralic. However, Vera Voloshina was determined to fight for her cause and the country she believed in, and today she is remembered as a hero of the Soviet Union. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.